I guess in the jungle, slightly more, slightly less sustained early game. Yeah, less sustained uh, for Gragas. Uh, Rek'Sai is still up there as yeah. a uh, as a big pick. Echo is going to be banned out here. Rise as well. So of course, Rise did have the adjustment so that he doesn't hit his power spike when he loads onto the rift. He actually has to scale up now. Um, but still, it will be banned away by X Nihilo. Azir comes out, aims at Godzuki. Not at Wicked. Uh, we saw this last week as well. People are fearing that pick. And Callista and Sivir round out the bands. Yeah. So 280 carry bands so far. That's uh, not not anything new. I would expect a first pick. Corky here if we were going by kind of LCS rules set up here out of uh, denial to maybe look to set themselves up a pick composition because if uh, a poke composition if you'll excuse me uh, if denial let X Nihilo now pick up Corky and uh, for instance a Janna that's a very good setup style to a poke composition yeah and we're also looking at this as as the first pick remember that uh, we are on 5.12 as you mentioned Runeglaive is now a thing uh, we've yeah. been seeing that on a bunch of champions but one champion in particular, Ezreal, has been finding his uh, way back into the meta. Yeah, AP Ezreal in the middle lane with Runeglaive and Smite. It, it sounds a little bit weird. I, a lot of players have started tweeting about it. It's a big impact pick that we actually didn't see yesterday at all. We saw teams favor the Jace and the Varus with the yep. AD, but uh, AP Ezreal in that middle lane, I am expecting a team or two to pick it up if it does end up coming to it. So we'll, we'll look more towards what that means when it gets picked up and how exactly it's played. But the Alistair first pick for Denial. Uh, that says a lot here that they don't want to, to pick themselves the AD carry. We spoke to Niels on the LCS and he said if we found ourselves in a situation where Callista and Sivir were banned and Corky wasn't available, the team without the Corky just had to kind of FF20 because there was no real way of getting him into the game. So uh, Wendelbo clearly very confident here that he is going to be able to do enough work on that Alistair of getting the engages on a poke team if he can find them. Well, the question here is, will X Nihilo take that one away? No, they will not. They will go for that Gragas again. Rek'Sai is still available for Denial to pick up. Then Victor comes in, which has been seen very often as a, as a safe first pick yeah. for the mid lane instead of a reactive pick. So it, it's very interesting when you look at how the meta has evolved, and it's something that we're still on the fringes of. We haven't really figured out how the 512 meta has kind of sat yet, but with the amount of poke going up, uh, wave clear is very crucial when it comes to being able to hold off against a lot of poke teams. Uh, as well, we may see the rise of some split push champions coming up with the changes that happen to towers. A lot of things we're going to have to see how they go, but Victor this early is not anything I would have expected expected at all. You look at other picks that are still available, uh, just in general, Rek'Sai was still up. Yes, they've gone with the Gragas, but as we said, we still haven't figured out how that has sat. Janna's still available, Corky's still available. So uh, we're kind of leaving it up into Denial's hands here. And yeah, and Denial actually pick up the Rek'Sai, which was to be expected as Gragas has been taken away, but they also pick up the Ari for the mid lane to go up against the Victor. As you mentioned, both of these teams are leaving pretty uh, significant picks open late into this picking phase. And these were very different bans out from X Nihilo. Yesterday they banned Thresh and Morgana. Uh, this game neither banned. So Noxiac can have either of those as he chooses. And, and that's interesting that you'd completely depart your picks and ban style. I mean, X Nihilo didn't exactly do so great in yesterday's game. Yeah. Now they're maybe looking for a slightly different strategy. So I'm interested to see what they come up with. Uh, no real surprises from the Rek'Sai coming out from Kirai. He was one of the players we obviously saw a lot from. Elise was his kind of other champion that we saw. Elise Rengar, yeah. Cos-Q picking himself a lane that he feels comfortable with. Ari against the Victor. Don't see it all that much, but uh, again, without well, kind of with what should be a drop in the amount of tanks in the top lane, Ari maybe is a little bit better. But saying that, Sazos looks like he wants himself some Maokai. Yeah, as we've been talking about, um, we were thinking we were going to see a departure from the tanks. We've seen a lot of rumble recently. The AP top laners, damage dealers. Now the Maokai is coming back in. We've even seen some Malphite as well. Uh, and it looks like teams are going back to that tank, um, that tank meta in the yeah. top lane. Question is, what comes in to then stump out the tank meta. Uh, we've had some buffs to Trundle, we've had some buffs to other uh, natural predators to those tanks. Yeah, I'm interested now to see what Wicked wants up in that top lane. Uh, normally when you see a Maokai come in, you'd look towards the likes of like a Rumble if yeah. you really wanted to, to establish some kind of control. But honestly, I think Wicked can actually pick pretty much anything. There's not a lot of kill potential coming out from Maokai, so he has a big wide option for what he wants in this setup. and. I mean, Aurelia would make sense. It's wicked. Aurelia and Malphite. This is bread and butter. Pretty much is bread and butter. Obviously, not looking to depart that too much. And Woolite had a great game on Tristana yesterday, so I don't see any particularly 
poor picks coming out here when it comes to the denial style, but certainly what we started seeing out of the top LCS teams here in Europe, uh, the likes of the Jace mid lane, the Varus, the Corkies, yeah. the Poke setup with a more of an AP top laner, that's not what we're seeing out of Denial. They don't want to go to uh, what is being played at the top, top mm. echelons of Europe. Or oh, XD, hello. Uh, no? They've actually gone for the Lucian right here. Crazy Caps is known for his Jinx, the late game champion. So is Warlight. Warlight now going on Trist uh, Tristana, which I like a lot. So I'm a lot on Cogmo, a lot of Jinx in the LCS. It meant he had no escape and he would just yeah. get caught and die. Tristana, we've seen him with some great uh, defensive rocket jumps, except when uh, they get interrupted by Flay. But uh, also... Yeah, Crazy Cat's going for this earlier mid-game champion is also interesting. Then we've already spoken about the uh, Irelia for Wicked. Now just waiting on the final pick from Ex Nihilo. And it will be a support. It's just a question of what Noxiac wants to bring in. I've seen the Alistair for him before. That's been denied from Denial. Uh, and his pick will be... Hmm. Braum. Okay. okay. So we were actually talking about this earlier in the office. This is quite yeah. funny that Braum will get picked up. Yeah. Um, I was talking about this with uh, Deficio and Crepo a little bit about what supports we're expecting to place where. Uh, I honestly, and a lot of our office as well, feel like Janna is still a top mm. priority when you look at uh, a disengaged support. Speaking to Crepo, he's talking about how difficult the Braum laning phase is to play at the highest level because of how much it relies on the vision in lane to be able to engage. It's a very, uh, yeah. very fine detail to it but of course uh, that pretty much is what we're looking for from these laning phases so I'm I'm interested to see Noxiac's reasoning for this because if yeah. it was disengaged Janna was up if you're looking to prevent the Alistair engage I can see that that would kind of work out a little bit if you want another tank role there that Janna just doesn't quite fulfill too so a lot of questions coming out from that support pick coming up uh, from Noxiac but we'll see if you can make it work yeah, it's it's interesting because Braun was changed a little bit in coming yeah. into 512. He had a little bit of more damage on his Winter's Bite, which he used to have, has now been given back to him, and slightly reduced mana cost. Right. But it's interesting because we see these small buffs to champions and then just reminds people that they exist and then they <laughs> bring them in, not just because they're a good champion again, right? Yeah, so, it's the placebo effect. Right, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'll see how it does in this game because as you mentioned, it seems like there may have been supports which just did more, like an Annie so, would be better engaging Jano for the disengage. So it's interesting because I'm actually still open to Braum support. I actually think there are a, a fair few benefits. Mm. So I'm, I'm actually excited to see the Braum now, which is kind of weird when you come to support picks. Yeah. It's not exactly an out of... Uh, left field pick, but I certainly am looking forward to seeing how it does. I'm not going to say uh, that it's a bad pick by any stretch of the imagination. It just depends how Noxiac now executes it. Yeah, well, we'll take a look at those team compositions as a whole as well, because we've spoken about the individual lanes. Um, so yeah, we've got pick coming in from Denial. We've got the Alistair as well, for just the peel for Woolite, which has uh, proved to be pretty necessary. Uh, over the last couple of weeks. Kyra now uh, coming into this team on the Rex side uh, has typically lent towards those um, squishier damage dealers in the jungle. So it's interesting that the Gracchus was picked up first and then gave Kyra what he would be more comfortable on. Yeah, that's one thing with only a couple of days in on the patch that we're looking at is, is where does that jungle priority go? They're still certainly uh, top of the meta. But over on the other side, look at how tanky this lineup is. Braum, Gragas, Maokai is just not going to die once they've got a couple of items under them. So it'll be, uh, it'll be very difficult without Woolite getting a lot of focused fire onto people towards the later stage of the game. Of course, uh, just in general, Denial kind of scale a little bit better when it comes to their AD carry in top lanes. So there's a lot still in this game that's up in the air. Well, as we get into this game, guys, use those hashtags you can see on your screen, DNLWin and EXNWin. Get on Twitter, tweet at LOL Esports, and we'll hear your opinion throughout the game. We will. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see why this Braum pick was the uh, the champion of choice. Yeah, the Braum. There's a lot of questions from the uh, ex Nihilo comp because the early victor as well. Yes, as well. that was actually going to be my very next point was you gave away mid lane pick mm. to pick your support, yeah. which if you feel like victor is the highest profile mid laner, then uh, we'll see how the victor works out too. Well, let's get into this rematch from the semifinals. It is Denial Esports up against X Nihilo. X Nihilo would like to net their first win of the split so far. Or even their first uh, win against Denial either would be pretty good here. Denial just not looking super great either. So uh, someone has to win, Stress. Someone does have to win. That is uh, the nature of the game. And uh, 
the nature of the game on 5.12 is something we're still trying to figure. Uh, we haven't seen all that many games, only just the handful here in Europe from yesterday's games. So uh, now we're trying to figure out exactly where the meta sits. Talked about how poke is still going to be very effective. Interesting to see Wicked now on a split pusher. We were talking about that a little bit earlier in the office as well, trying to figure out exactly where things were going. So uh, Irelia is going to have an easier time slightly as we go later into the game. She already has some harass down, but I remember the, the turrets in the base, the ones that fire the, the consistent laser, mm -hmm. now will no longer reduce damage and no longer slow on this patch. So a, an added bonus to sitting in front of turrets and, and kind of trying to trade damage onto your enemies. Yeah, nice for split pushes where you want to dive the person you're ahead of uh, before you couldn't do that and you just die uh, to them. So it's uh, that change will be good for them. Kyrie has to sacrifice a little bit of his ability to control the jungle at the very beginning because he forgot his totem. Ah. Yeah. Even the best of us do it. Well, we'll uh, this is the first time in summer split we've seen Kyrie. Was, uh, <laughs> Nerves we getting into him, him in spring. Perhaps. Interesting to see whether he'll be a player that picks up Elise after the changes, because Elise was a yeah. very big pickup of his. But you can see how the wards were set up in the early game, and Crazy Caps looked hey. like he was going to run past the wall and uh, actually just ran straight over the wards. So the information has been given here, and uh, Noxiak and Crazy Caps are on the top side of the map. So now you put the pressure on this Aurelia, who has to now go around the jungle and look to farm with Karai. Yeah, he'll have to take the long route all the way over to uh, Kirei because he is in the bottom side of the jungle, whereas Zazas was already prepared for this lane swap with Impaler, yeah. so he'll be getting that early experience uh, from the jungle. Yeah, and it makes it a lot easier because Zazas set up on the wolves as yeah. well, so he took that camp completely and is now level 2 without leeching any experience from Impaler, whereas uh, the other duo is going to be down on experience on Wicked for now. You also saw in the bottom lane that Woolite uh, managed to kind of get the wave exactly how we wanted it to begin this when you can see he's looking to set up a freeze not looking to push it in and look for the 4v0 that we have seen out of some of the LCS teams yeah so uh, we're seeing this lane's hot but fairly quiet so far into this game stress uh, Kirei and Wicked now have found each other in the bottom side of the jungle Wicked and Kirei now going into the opposing jungle, I'm not sure what they're looking for. They haven't called exactly where they've started, so this is uh, this is a fairly big blunder. So this is banking on uh, X Nilo starting on their weaker side of the map, looking for the buff, but they're going to take something from it because here is Godzuki. Oh, they get the flash from Godzuki, but there is a lot of members of X Nihilo right behind him to support him, and Dinara do not go any further on that engage, and the rest of X Nihilo will fan out into the top side of the map. But with that knowledge. Now X Nihilo can go for this blue buff. Yeah, so sorry, that that banked on X Nihilo playing it safer and starting on their duo side of the map is uh, is w what I was yeah, yeah. meaning to say. Uh, this time it was X Nihilo starting on the slightly riskier side where the AD carry and support are in the bottom side for denial. Uh, so had Wendelbo roamed out earlier, he may have been able to disrupt, but X Nihilo get away uh, a little bit with that and uh, denial get themselves a flash in the mid lane and are looking to loop back around perhaps in uh, a moment or so and try and push in on Godzuki again who actually is shoving fairly far up in the mid lane you can see he just got pinged actually by uh, Denial so could be looking for another gank when it comes to how the tower pushing goes look at how much damage Woolite already had done to that tower in the bottom lane Tristana is very good at pushing them early on and now Godzuki has to be careful if he steps forward I feel like I've seen this one before the flash into the knock up onto Godzuki Godzuki with the damage as well first blood will go up to Wicked oh man Godzuki you know your flash is down you haven't seen the uh, jungler and the top laner go to the turret in the bottom lane which actually just fell at the same amount of time as X Nilo are putting pressure in the top side you didn't see the two arrive on the map again and you push out it clearly passed the halfway mark and then has to come back that's just god bro not really reading how this early game is going honestly denial should never have been able to get that setup and in the top lane right now zaz is just uh taking away some of that cs allowing it to go towards that turret denial now swapping their uh or keeping their duo lane to the top lane and zaz is the one to meet them up there so they will be swapping up and Zazas, you know, he didn't have a super great week last week. Uh, he played the Fizz into a Maokai, which he's playing now, and just didn't do a whole lot. He played Shen as well, another tank, but it's a big departure from 
Zaz's um, kind of reign on, yeah. on Hecarim, on it, damage dealers. It really is a big departure. And honestly, uh, the Fizz into Maokai, ma Maokai matchup was fairly a favorable matchup for that. Uh, and he should have really got himself into the game. I think it was a mix of not being able to get into the game and his opponents putting a lot of pressure on him in, the, in those games. Really just could never get himself settled. So I, I just, I agree with you. Zazis needs to be such a big... Uh, such a bigger focus for uh, for X Nihilo than he actually has been in the last week and a half. And speaking of Zazus, he's in the top lane and he'll have to take a trip back to his inner turret because Kyrae is here to uh, zone him away from the minions. The top tower map now being pushed in by D now. Likewise, the same is happening on the bottom of the map, but Impaler is slightly slower to the punch. He's only now just arriving as Gragas. So I'm not sure there's a whole lot that level three Zazus can do right now against this triple four level threat. Even in this lane swap situation that X Nihilo orchestrated, uh, Denial are getting the better of it by far. And you can see how much damage just goes down on these turrets it's every single time Willite gets in front of them. Uh, it, a lot of it stems from the fact that they have a Tristana that is able to push very quickly, but also just that kill in the middle lane that X Nihilo didn't really utilize their pressure on the map with either. Godbro was kind of left on his own and could do nothing, very much like Zazis is now, but I don't like the idea too much of diving a Maokai with this big shield stacked up already at level three. He's got enough crowd control that he should be able to take somebody with him here if they do look to dive properly. Yeah, especially uh, as we have Impaler and Noxia coming into the top side. Bottom side, the second turret will be secured by X Nihilo. So trading blow for blow when it comes to these tower objectives, only the first blood is putting D now ahead of X Nihilo so far. Sapling go over the wall, well, not disrupt one, although we'll find another target in the form of Warlight. Doesn't get in, uh, there in time to touch down. Wicked now swapping into the bottom lane. This will be trying to farm up against Crazy Caps. Just waiting for this minion wave to head towards him and hopefully freeze it as well as he can. Yeah, he's uh, if he, if Wicked can get himself a lot of farm here, just sat in a lane on his own, he should be fairly happy overall here because uh, Denial, when it comes to it, they need a little bit of time when it comes to their itemization. Uh, Irelia is going to need that Triforce. He's going to need Tristana to get two items under her belt. X and Hello are looking to uh, invade and they actually do pick up the red buff already. Denial aren't collapsing in time yet. They're a little off the mark here, but flash in from Alistair. Yeah, gets a pulverize as well. Kyra comes in for the knockup, but uh, does not quite get it off onto Nox yet. Kazuki looking for a charm. Nox is in level three, he's fairly squishy. And looks for the charm, the flash out of the way, and X Nihilo are good to go as the death ray comes in from the side. Yeah, just not quite fast enough out of uh, Denial's lineup to get themselves in with the rest of the fight, but X Nilo were already on their way out of the jungle. And uh, Noxiak, not really uh, reactive flashing to begin that little engage, held on to it, knowing that he could just dodge that jump of Kosky and be fine. So X Nilo uh, have started to get themselves back on the board here. They are down in gold. It is only really that first blood that separates the two teams. We're even on turrets as well. Uh, but I, I still feel like X Nilo perhaps need to uh, force the game in a bit. Once we start getting past the first, second dragon, I think that's really going to be X Nihilo's time to shine, uh, is when you've got maybe an item and a half on Victor. That really is where they're going to have to start taking the fight to denial. Yeah, but the uh, Triforce item spike from Wicked is pretty strong. Probably the champion that scales hardest uh, immediately from that Triforce. And Kotsuki in this middle lane here, 73 farm up to uh, 54 from Godzuki. That initial kill has opened up a pre uh, pretty significant gold gap between them. It really has, and remember, this was the first pick here as that victor for X Nihilo, and as yet, it's not working out, but obviously with the uh, the presence of a split pusher from Denial, the, uh, the, the value of wave clear is going to go up fairly significantly coming out from Godbro Godzuki in that middle lane on Victor, but it's X Nihilo that are first to the dragon. This is a heavily warded dragon, though. You can see Pink Ward was on it and the Crab Vision as well, but the read is that... Uh, the Denial Kyrie is not around, and this will be a dragon going over to X Nihilo. No real way of contesting. You can see Kyrie just crossed the ward as well himself. So X Nihilo with a good read on the map. It may have not been the better read on the lane swap, but they certainly have picked themselves up enough since. Yeah, Kyrie was not quite in position at the right time. So that was a good call from X Nihilo. So far, we've just seen a lot of uh, poor decision-making when it comes to the fights that X Nihilo take, but generally when it comes to objectives, X Nihilo's shot calling is good. 
just usually the opposing team happens to be there at the same time, which forces a fight for them, which uh, is not so good. Sazza's yeah. on the run here from Kirei, because Q was trying to get in range with the Spirit Rush, has used all three of those charges, doing very little. So Zaza's just by being a little bit annoying, has burnt that ultimate. Kirei, he really wants his crab, and he has a smite. Zaza's just here to be <laughs> annoying. Yeah, Zaza's uh, not going to be able to get that one away, but take a look over at the top side. Uh, Wicked is still sat in that lane. He hasn't got a massive CS lead, but I wonder how the experience is going to play out in his favor if he's left to do this for a lot longer. If Wicked does get a level advantage over Zazus, that could be very problematic because uh, realistically, somebody is going to have to sit in front of that lane where Wicked is trying to push, and Zazus is only going to be able to hold him for so long. The question is, can Zazus do more of his, with his team before that happens? Because right, right now, Denial is letting Wicked soak up all the farm. He did the bot lane, he's now in the top lane, wherever the spare farm, it will go to Wicked. Well, like, there's a good defensive rocket jump. Remember, you have to do that away from the enemy. Um, <laughs> Kyrie here as well, gonna clear out this ward, just get the charm onto Noxiac, but he's fine. He's he's good and happy. Part of me felt like that was kind of like a very poisoned jab, as if that maybe, was almost maybe. for Wallite's benefit, but um, we saw a great game out of him yesterday. Noxiac, however, a lot of damage chunked on, but flash from Godbro. Yeah, Godzuki with the Chaos Storm as well, chunking down Wendell hmm. Bow, who will be walking away out of this one. He's a big tanky Alistair. He's not afraid of a Chaos Storm. And the sapling will land onto Cos Cube. It's been a lot of trading in terms of skills, but not a whole lot of death. But maybe Zazas will be the first one here. Will like will get the kill onto him. The Groundy Field will lock them down, but not before the tree has already bit the dust. Really uh, kind of weird engage coming out from X Nilo. Now they're going to be forced to try and wave clear this. But you can see the laser was just used by Godbro. He doesn't have enough uh, AP right now to be making plays like that. And honestly, one mistake, and that's going to be the tower going down as well. Impaler from the side. And Cos Cube also makes a mistake and Impaler will punish him. Noxiac though gets crushed by Kyre as he jumps into that back lines just to kill Braum off. The teleport was started up by Zazas but was not needed so he'll cancel that and get the extra cooldown. Yeah both teleports actually cancelled from that but Denial it might not be done yet. Oh good ultimate by Impaler slams both Kyre and Woolite against the wall but that will zone him away from the turret. Should be enough to take this middle turret you would think but there is this uh, mini wave that was very quickly dissipating and it will go over to X Nihilo. So that was a pretty good push and a good turnaround all in all for X Nihilo. Yeah, turret for turret trade. Denial come out uh, with the gold advantage from the kills that they got from that engage. Uh, but I want to go all the way back to the beginning of that engage. Godbro kind of just flashing a wall onto an Alistair to try and land that Chaos Storm. Uh, this early on, Godzuki has only at that point had the Mark 1 Hex Core, which was only giving him 52 added AP. Didn't have a big spike uh, of magic damage after that. You can see after he managed to get the Mark 2 plus an Amp Tome. So he didn't really have like a needlessly large rod size yeah. amount of AP that was just bursting down on that Chaos Storm. So uh, honestly, a flash like that, uh, it, if that continues to happen, is going to be costly. We've already seen him ganked and, and died once. Now he's playing without flash again. So uh, X and Yellow need to be careful when they go for those kind of engages because look at how far down Godbro is in CS right now. 123 to 88 overall in that mid lane is pretty devastatingly uh, in Cosq's favor. And it's a lot of farm difference all over the borders. Denial take away this buff. A bit angry that X Nihilo were gonna able to uh, were able to get one over them before on that red buff. But yeah, in the top lane, Wicked has still been soaking up farm and is now on 87 compared to 46, where Zazas has always been with his team. That blue buff denial is very significant at this point. Oh, actually, Charm has landed onto Crazy Caps, but there's no minion wave. And the reason it's significant is because of the minion waves. There's no real way for X Nihilo to clear these waves in whichever lane Tristana is in before Tristana deals significant damage to the towers. Look, they've only just got here with this wave, and that is going to chunk it to half health. If Victor doesn't have mana, or the cooldown reduction to take the wave out from underneath Denial, these towers are going to fall very quickly. And even if he does, there isn't two victors. So in <laughs> yeah. the mid lane, it's going to be Denial taking that one away as well. Top lane has also been set up from Denial by Wicked, so they have the wave management ready. Wenobo in from behind, ready to set up the kill onto Noxiad, gets the Fissure down and will zone them away. The uh, tower aggro is onto the cow, so 
pretty much what they wanted there. And now the tower is still being pushed in. Kirei is just rotating from lane to lane, burrowing through the jungle of Next Ex Nihilo. The thing is, Denial didn't actually have to make that engage. Yes, they know that they have the numbers advantage, but uh, if you can't hit the charm so cleanly, just do the same again. Sit there with the Tristana with the minion wave pushing in. And if there's only one person there, they cannot defend that turret. And you take the free objective from it uh, because you saw Victor move out and there's good enough warding from Denial deep into the jungle of Ex Nihilo that really there's no way for Godzuki to rotate through the short parts. He has to go all the way through the base. So it, it's just a, a numbers game for Denial here. Yes, they are, don't actually have a tower advantage yet, but the amount of damage they've got on towers is much higher in Denial's favor. Oh yeah, very soon it will... Uh it will go that way. Meanwhile, Noxiak just get caught once again by Wonderbo with the combo. Cosq in here as well. Woolite and Kire come out and do take him down. Crazy Cat's over the wall looking to follow up as well. Everyone is going over the wall to chase after him. Comes in with the culling. Impaler jumping to safety using the body slam. And then Crazy Cat was able to take away the rest of the minion wave. Now second dragon on the board should be going over to Denial. Normally with Ex Nihilo, we've seen these fights open up the position on the dragon where Ex Nihilo are able to just take it for themselves. That's how they accrued uh, the four dragon lead in yesterday's game. However, Denial, very similar to yesterday, will take the second dragon of the game for themselves. We'll see whether Denial can force this game faster than they did yesterday, because that was one of the things that really let Ex Nihilo start ticking up that dragon count. Interestingly, we saw the fan vote, and it was massively in favor of yeah. Ex Nihilo, despite them never having taken the game against Denial or at all. So yeah. uh, there's a lot of faith in this line of Ex Nihilo. There really is. I, I actually think, if I'm not mistaken, that are they really Owen? seven overall throughout qualifiers through into the first round. I think so. I believe so. <laughs> That's uh, not the uh, the most convincing of nope. stat lines for now, but I, I certainly think that they are a team with the experience to seriously look at that kind of stat line uh, and just look at what are our problems, what do we need to fix, how do we fix them? Because these players have been in this kind of situation before, and these players have been winning before. So they know what it takes to win, they just need to kind of remind themselves and, and reshape the team and uh, exactly what they're going for in game. But do they? Because we've seen <laughs> the same problems for them week after week, from I qualifiers to week one to the first game of this week. I would like to think so. Uh, we're especially in an e ecosystem where that kind of changes are happening very rapidly, but an ecosystem, the uh, trees are getting cut down in the top lane. No, oh, Zaza's run for your life, gets knocked up again underneath the turret, is being chunked down. One more auto attack into the, uh, into the explosive charge from Wallite will be enough to pop him down. And Godzuki, he wanted to help his tree friend, but is not there in time. Wicked, very preemptive flash away from Impaler, trying to get the pick onto him. Bottom lane is being pushed in. Top lane is being pushed in a little bit faster, though, by Denial. And this one will be going down, breaking that inner ring of turrets. Yeah, that is uh, the fourth of the game. But again, Ex Nilo will trade it in an equal trade on the turrets. But there's so little way of, of Ex Nihilo keeping up with the numbers here from Denial when it comes to just pushing in multiple lanes. They've got Rek'Sai's global presence, they've got Wicked when he has his teleport available, has uh, a fair amount of global presence and split push as well. So Denial can realistically sit in three lanes and push all three lanes. And Ex Nihilo do not have that amount of wave clear. No, they do not. But Wicked can clear this wave while there's no one there. At least 131 CS now to 83. Has now accumulated a 50 CS advantage. Mid lane is a 40 CS advantage. So not only in kills, but also in terms of CS. We actually saw this yesterday as well. A lot of kills going over to Denial and then a lot of farm uh, being accrued over Ex Nihilo. Yeah, we, we did. And, and it's not just the farm that's the important thing in this kind of situation. Remember, Wicked wants to find himself against one other person in the lane against him. Uh, otherwise, he'll just back away from the situation. He is about to hit level 12, I believe, or about a third of a level away from it. Uh, and Zazis has only just hit level 10. Last time I checked, it was 11 to 9. So there's nearly a two level experience advantage in favor of Denial for that top lane. So Wicked and Zazis are never going to, well, Zazis is never going to be able to really sit in front of Wicked in a 1v1 situation. He doesn't want to, but if he's left to, it's going to go heavily in Zazis, in uh, Wicked's favor. Yeah, he is not even on his righteous glory yet uh, at 19 minutes and into this game. Um, is looking towards the Frozen Heart, most likely up against Wicked. The uh, extra armor and reduction on the attack speed were pretty nice in that 1v1 matchup. 
It's taking four people from Ex Nihilo to clear away this wave and make sure that Dinar do not take anything more away from them. Top wave needs to be pushed in. Wicked has recalled for that one. And now Denial with a good rotation move into the top side of the map and will secure vision around this Baron area as Baron has just spawned. Probably won't be an objective for them uh, in the near future, but something to keep an eye on. Still haven't yet seen this Braum pick work out. Uh, it, or at least what Noxiax is looking for from it. We haven't really seen him disengaging too many fights uh, and saving Ex Nihilo as they back away. We're not also not seeing any fights set up by Noxiac either. It's very difficult to set up a Braum fight, I will be honest. But I, I just, I feel like if they wanted something that was going to be able to help them this game, maybe a, a, a Janna would have helped. Just it gives extra wave clear, it's disengaged. It, you know, it's the ability to hold on in front of a turret. But uh, nevertheless, Ex Nihilo are going to do their best f old Fnatic impression. When in doubt, Fnatic. Well, that seems like a very good uh, yeah, undefeated right good now thing to have. Not too bad. So, I mean, if you will get this red dress. Get right. Winner! Got it. Victory. And Ex Nihilo, they're getting vision control ahead of Dragon. <laughs> but nobody's stopping Wicked. So Wicked is now able to shove a massive wave up into the top side. So that when Dragon does spawn, Wicked either takes the inhib turret here uh, or forces Zazas to come up to react, which is enough to just get the teleport out of him as well, as Wicked looks to take uh, the teleport into the fight. So either Denial get the Dragon, or they get the inhib turret, or they get both in this situation. It depends on how Zazas wants to play this out. And you can see Wicked's actually walked down towards the Dragon now, and Woolite's going bottom lane, so... This wasn't quite as on time as Denial would have liked. We could actually shove that lane in a little too early when you look at things overall. Yeah, and now he's recalling with Cod's Q, uh, and they do not have super great vision around that area. Uh, so but they do have the rest of the team in the bot side. This might actually be problematic because Zazis can set up a slow push in the top side if he really wanted to. Uh, and. It looks like that is just about what is going to happen. It's going to slowly push in favor of Ex Nihilo. So if Denial can't punish Ex Nihilo for warding through this jungle and walking forward, Ex Nihilo should oh, be able to contest, no, but Not there's again. the punish. Gets knocked up, gets knocked up again. Bounty Castle, it's free for you, Noxiac, and Warlight will come in with the last couple yeah. of autos and the explosive charge. And down goes Braum. Okay, so now it doesn't really matter what happened in top lane because that's the other side of this, is if you get a catch, there's almost no way, really, of uh, Ex Nihilo contesting this. So, I mean, there was they just didn't sweep over the areas they were in. They couldn't control the entire lower side uh, jungle for themselves. So no real way of Ex Nihilo pushing out to contest that dragon and it, it just means we're in this situation again where now Denial can sit in front of turrets and just push him down. It's been a long time since they were down in this bottom lane. Been a good five to seven minutes. Yeah, but they did manage to get a little bit more damage on it last time they were here. They've uh, tried two times and now this tower is at a third HP. It may be a little easier for Denial to take down. Godzuki is in, in this bush with the death ray prepped. And we'll be clearing that one out. But in the mid lane, Kozgu is actually taking turns and split pushing this time around. Top lane is pushing away from Ex Niho. So uh, yeah. Dinao only really have one option right now, which is uh, push the bottom lane. Well, that's the uh, the or slow push that, that Zaza set up. So that actually is really going to hamper uh, Denial when it comes to the pace that they want to play this out. They have the scaling for the late game anyway. Um, so Denial are in no rush to force this game to close any time soon. They have Irelia, they have Tristana. So, like, honestly, Denial, it's not a big problem for them that that's happened. They're ahead in Dragons. The only real thing they should be worried about now is Ex Nihilo uh, using position on the map to maybe look to sneak a Baron within the next five to 10 minutes. Mm. That would be uh, fairly detrimental here because Denial themselves would then have to be on the back foot. but. I still think this game is very much so in Denial's favor. Yeah, I mean, a 7k advantage in this game, one tower advantage, but it's all really from kills, the farm, plus that extra dragon going yeah. over to uh, Denial means that they are pretty significantly ahead of Ex Nihilo. Uh, yesterday, we saw Ex Nihilo, when put in this position, just take multiple bad fights despite being behind, which exacerbated the horrible position they were in. This time, they're going with a passivity approach. Which I actually think is, is probably a, a more beneficial approach for them because it means that they're not getting rolled over very quickly. Uh, it means that the time for Denial to close this game out does get prolonged. 
because ex Nilo aren't just constantly giving gold, extra gold over to Denial. It means that ex Nilo can now kind of sit back and rely on shot calling, which from knowing Impaler for a very long time and how his playstyle goes when it comes to his jungle calls, he has this weird sense to be like, okay, we can just go Baron. And nine times out of 10, it works. Uh, there is always that 10th time that it doesn't <laughs> work. So I still think that ex Nihilo, they still have uh, slight windows in this game where Denial aren't going to quite be able to close it out. I, they're going to have to rely on some pretty good shot calling, though, right now. Yeah, recent is felt like the 10th time every time, but Noxiax <laughs> That now is quite true. <laughs> backing off. He is getting chunked by the Explosive Charge again by Warlight. He is dishing out a lot of hurt. 4-0 and 1 in this game. He's actually had a pretty good week so far. Zazz's will be recalling. Bot lane will definitely be going over to Wicked. Cos may have found Impaler, though, in the jungle. Gets hit against the wall. Finds Crazy Caps and said he'll take that one. And goes after him with the Fox Fires. Will flash away from the Grouty Field and the Burst from Godzuki and comes away with the pick. So Denial find the time to back after that dragon, set themselves up for their uh, split push game once again. Shove a wave in the top lane, shove a wave with Wicked in the bottom lane. They get a turret, they get kills. And now again, Denial just on the front foot for themselves. They have a fair amount of gold stacked up on Tristan, or at least 1300 right now. So looking for that last whisper once this Baron has been completed. But this is a Tristan and an Alistair. Pop the alley ult and uh, get themselves on to the Baron. It's not dying all that fast though, and Alistair's ult j did just run out. So this is Denial playing this riskily. They actually have to back away. I'm, mm, I thought Kyrie was there with them, but he was actually just holding people off. So D Denial didn't actually need to make that call. They had waves pushing top and bottom. Yeah, didn't need to, but styling a little bit in this game. Perhaps Wicked in the bot lane did manage to take that turret. They now have all of the inner turrets in this game. 7-1, and one, pretty dominating performance so far. If they were able to pick up the Baron, great. If not, not too much of a big deal as they can just go with the full team, force a fight, and still be in pretty good shape. From ex Nihilo side, um, apart from a, a crazy Baron still from Impaler, what are their options? Because this game even it gets stored out, there's a Tristana and there's an Aurelia. They need at least to sit back for Victor to complete his needlessly large rod item. Uh, because he's been on such a low economy setup here for this game. He's down 60 CS, uh, just has had to try and be in multiple places at once. He's opted for Morella Nomicon after the, uh, the Hex Core. So he doesn't have that massive spike of AP yet that he really needs to just start blowing people up in these fights. Uh, Ex Nihilo with Wicked down in that bottom lane. I'm going to clear the wards out around Baron. I don't think they'll actually start it right now because uh, they have seen a good few members of Denial mid. We haven't dewarded enough, but it looks like they want to fight perhaps. They've caught Cos Q. Oh, it's looking like a potentially good glacial fissure. There it comes up onto Wendell Bow. Kyrie goes for this fight. Wicked is not teleporting in just yet, and Woolite is getting chased after by Impaler, but he has the damage. They turn what? around. Ex Nihilo take those two kills, and Wicked quite happy with those minions he killed. It just did not teleport into that fight, and now Ex Nihilo take two kills for themselves and position on the dragon. That is. That, that is really weird that that teleport did not come out. It was available. There were minions in the middle of the fight and two wards around the top of the fight yep, as well. I, I really don't know why that teleport didn't come out. I, I, that's kind of lost, left me lost for words. Yeah, a little strange. And that will allow Ex Nihilo to pick up this dragon pretty much uncontested after that fight. Also allows Crazy Caps to go into the bottom lane and undo all of the pushing work that Wicked did and give extra farm to that AD carry to allow him to catch up to Warlight. And uh, this second dragon will mean that it will take a very, very long time for, uh, for Denial to uh, use those five dragons. But let's take a look at that so last fight. it's at this point that the teleport could be coming out. Like, realistically, at this point, look at all the minions that are here. Even the tunnel. I, I there must be some reasoning here that Wicked just didn't teleport in that I'm, I'm not quite seeing because this, although it's a fairly cut and dry fight for Ex Nihilo as it's going on, you can see how much impact perhaps an Irelia would have had in that kind of situation. But as Cos Q gets caught, if that teleport comes in, it prevents Ex Nihilo from going towards the fed Irelia. Irelia has 120 CS up on the Maokai. She is very strong at this point. Yeah, well, Wicked wouldn't have that big CS lead if he teleported into fights, <laughs> would he stress? Well, I'm, I'm pinning it down to there being a, some external reason. Whether they thought the fight 
whether they thought it was just Cos Q getting caught and then the rest of the fight kind of happened and it was too late to teleport in, or whether there was another reason. Clearly, Denial didn't want to take that fight with the teleport. So that seemed to be more of a team decision. I don't think that was down to one person. That's what it felt like. And Warlight now jumping over the wall, and Denial will start off this Baron, but the entirety of Ex Nihilo are very close this to this area. This is dying fairly quick, though. It is dying very quickly, and there is vision of, over it from Ex Nihilo. This is Impaler's time. Can he do it? He can't. No, nope, he didn't. Pyre will kill him. Oh, Impaler, it was right at the right amount of health, but Wicked's here. Oh, it's clean up time. This time, Wicked is in the fight. Double kill for Warlight comes in, looking for his triple. We'll shoot after, get the Buster shot. Looking for Zaz as well. Give me that Quadra. And Warlight, pretty good game. Warlight is having a great game. Another 8-0 and zero game for Warlight. And now they're going to look towards a turret. So this time the teleport still available for Wicked comes into the fight. And after Impaler dies in the Baron pit, is enough to take him down. Well, this looks like it could be the end of the game here. Stress Impaler. Yes, the death timers are very low because it is only 30 minutes into the game. But with these Barons up minions, the team of Denial being so strong and that being a 5-0 and zero fight, at least both of the inhibitors will go down here before everyone goes back to base from Denial. And it really does look like, uh, well, after all the items have been bought by Denial, this will be the final push coming in. Yeah, it's uh, just a matter of time for Denial now, as two inhibs being down, it was difficult enough for X and Yellow to wave clear with pretty much just God Bro and the ult coming from Crazy Cabs to begin with. But uh, this game has just been a, a barrage of minions heading towards ex Nihilo's base that they just are not able to, to withstand. They just cannot get rid of the minions fast enough. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of ways to do that with uh, with Victor and Lucian, and Lucian not being super fed at this stage. At the very least, uh, ex Nihilo will get their blue buff. There are silver linings in everything, I guess. Uh, Godzuki will get that one. Maybe finding Wendell Bow in the bottom side. This very much looks like an engage I saw yesterday. Uh, engaging onto the Alistair, who will then ult promptly, and then the turnaround from Denial or not. They'll just let the Alistair die, per uh, perhaps. Guess the lockdown. Wendell Bow is dying very slowly, but eventually Ex Nihilo will kill him. Zazas gets him, and now Coscube coming in from the top side. Wally actually gets shut down. He rocket jumped into the enemy team again. Well, and I, two I and mean, zero. You say again. He's 8-1 and one right now. That was uh, another pick up right. here for ex uh, <laughs> Not in the last Not in this okay. game. You're not in the last game, but okay. historically. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you off on that one. But I, I again, I, I want to sing Will Light's praises because we talked about how in LCS, actually, scratch that, Impaler is going to die to Wicked. Yeah, he's found him. He's going to kill him eventually, and especially with the rest of the team there to CC him down. Koski will get the credit for that kill. And with that pick, it continued the push into the bottom side. Had two members from Ex Nihilo had to go back to deal with those minions. And Wicked comes out. But uh, yeah, Woolite has actually been super great in this week overall. Yeah, th this I week. Poking I, just I know, I know. I want to be uh, fair to <laughs> Woolite, though, because the guy does get a lot of criticism yeah. when it comes to it. So he has been looking way more solid and has died far less. This is only his second death on the week. Like that. Yeah. Let's let's we leave it at that. A lot of kills, like, not a lot of assists. A lot of kills, a lot of assists, not a lot of deaths. So I'm I'm happy to sing his praises. But uh, right now, I, I, this game for denial. This is what we were expecting out of them when it came to last week. This is the denial we were expecting, where they don't really seem phased by what Ex Nihilo or any other team are doing for themselves. Here comes the last chance engage. They go on to Wicked as their primary target. Don't really have the damage just yet. Kiting back. Cos Q looking for the damage onto Godzuki. He gets a lot of it down. Kyrie is here as well to lock up the back lines. And Wicked is still alive. He's almost full HP. That focus from Ex Nihilo basically did nothing. And the rest of the team will close in. Seeing that there is no inhibitor in the bot lane. No inhibitor in the top lane. And that means that the these towers will go down, and so will the Nexus. Denial will take this game 2-0 and zero in this week over Ex Nihilo. That was a lot better a performance out of Denial than we have seen in week one. Week two, a lot cleaner for themselves. And honestly, we, we asked, where does this put these two teams? And you have to feel like Denial, it sets them back into the top half of uh, the Challenger teams. And, Ex Nihilo, unfortunately, do reside in that bottom half of the, our teams by the looks of things two weeks in. Yeah, well, it definitely shows where the divide is because yeah. this has been every single game that Denial has played against Ex Nihilo, they have won. They're clearly a stronger team than them right now. 
And that means that Ex Nihilo, who can they pick up wins against? Because they've lost against every team that they could potentially pick up wins against right. so far. Um, and then they're still at the bottom of the scoreboard. So they just need to find someone or continue to grow. And we have not seen a lot of growth from them. Yeah, I mean, the it's it's a difficult one because there are only five weeks where you play twice over two days. Mm. And then if, if you haven't improved in those five weeks, it's not like the LCS where there's you know, nine weeks where there's a lot of improvement, then playoffs. Yeah. If you don't improve to that level within the, the third or fourth week, the hopes of making playoffs just isn't really there for Ex Nihilo. However, this is a lot better for Denial. And I, I feel a lot more confident after watching that game from them. Yeah, I do too. Um, yeah, Denial are just looking looking like a mid-tier team, but not looking like a top-tier team. So I, I guess moving forwards, they need to show that they can be every other team other than Dignitas to show that they are like that second-tier team that we were talking about uh, last week because we were looking at them being the top two with, uh, with Dignitas. But we are going to take a look at one of the replays from that game. It was Denial securing the Baron and then the Ace at around 31 minutes. So this was actually uh, the TP coming in early to the fight from Wicked. This time he gets himself right into the background. Uh, of this fight and honestly this is just Warlight being massively ahead at this point and <laughs> it's a very easy triple for Warlight at that point almost untouched sorry quadra kill to finish that one off for Warlight and mm. that's what we expect from an LCS level AD carry is when you're given that lead you just close team fights out very quickly very efficiently yeah it took him some time to adjust but after this week only two deaths over two games he ended this game 10 1 and 3 he had 290 cs in a 34 minute game just looking pretty good looking like an lcs player should in the challenger scene yeah you would that's pretty much what you'd expect completely out of, of warlight but you know an impressive game from him it wasn't a solo effort i actually think the, the rest of denial mm -hmm. stepped up as well wicked Although, yes, he split pushed a lot. We know that's how L Wicked likes to play. Yeah. If he gets his choice, that's how he gets to play League yep. of Legends, is I'm going to just sit in one lane against you, farm a lot, and then TP when I have to. So yeah. He plays both sides of that matchup as well. The guy who's stopping the split push is yeah, Malphite, yeah. or the guy who was doing the split push is very earlier. True. So, yeah, he knows that scenario very well. Um, and maybe sometimes Tunnel Vision's too hard on it. Because in the bottom lane, <laughs> I don't know well, if that was Wicked. I don't know uh, if it was the team, but I would I, like some light I kinda on that. I kind of want to rewatch exactly how the positioning went on that one. Just yeah. just because I feel like it was they thought Koski was getting caught on his own, and it ended up being a couple more kills. I, yeah, I, yeah that, I would go so far as to say that was most likely what it was, but you never know. Unless you're in the mind's pulse. Unless you're, I'm not a mind reader, you're right I have to there. Say, so, uh, I'm yeah. so glad about that. <laughs> Oof, well, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> with game one locked down, we've got a Taruma shuffle. I'll wait to a quick break, but when we return, game two with Overclockers UK and Team Dignitas EU gets underway.